everyone. My name is Christine Chow. I'm Amelia Deepa. And we are Zillennial Beauty Perspective. This is our new YouTube channel where we'll be talking about everything beauty, wellness related. And we're so excited to share some of our insights with you. Um, to go into why I wanted to start this. So I am a student studying beauty marketing and product development at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. And my goal is to be within the beauty industry in a marketing capacity. And with that, part of my responsibility is to stay up to date with the beauty industry trends, what's happening, just so I could be a better informed employee and better informed person in the beauty industry. And with that, I, feel like I develop a lot of opinions. I have a lot of great experience with the FITM program, having the academic side. I'm also an Ulta Beauty advisor part-time. So I get to see that consumer side and I get a little bit of that professional side with internships. But again, like looking at the news is always really fun. And I wanted someone to chat about that with. Like it's important for all of us to stay updated, but it's also nice to have someone you can share your perspective with and grow with. So I was trying to think like, who do I know that's in the beauty industry? I know a lot of people, but like, who do I want to share ideas with? Who am I always learning from and growing from? Who has a good perspective on the beauty industry as well in her own right? And of course I thought about my best friend, Christine Chow. So do you want to kind of introduce yourself and like share your experience with the beauty industry? Yes, absolutely. So um, as Molly said, we are just really excited to share some of the insights that we have in the industry. Granted, I am not extremely established. I'm a PR assistant right now at a luxury skincare company here in LA. Um, I went to FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology. There I studied advertising and communications. Um, and right now I'm working PR. So I have some history in terms of advertising and copywriting, public relations, social media management. Um, I've interned and worked at a lot of different companies in the beauty landscape from wellness to skincare and hair care and makeup. So yeah, I'm just really excited to share more. And I think this is just gonna be a great opportunity to really learn more about different brands and kind of share our perspectives. Yeah, and with that, part of the reason we decided on the name The Zillennial Beauty Perspective is because we wanted to make it clear we are not the authorities in the beauty industry. We're both 24, so um, we're just starting off our careers in the beauty industry, and we like to call ourselves Zillennials because we're definitely not like Gen Z, but we're not millennials, we're kind of in between. But with that, I feel like we have a very unique perspective. We kind of see both generations, but we also have that consumer side and that industry side being academically and professionally in the industry. Yeah, for sure. So let's start off with our first article. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I'm very excited to talk about this one. So the topic of this video is men's grooming and really sharing how men's grooming has evolved and how it is now booming. Um, and Amolia will share some great insights and graphs actually. Um, so you can really see how it's grown. So clearly you'll see the title of this article is from Harper's Bazaar. Alex Rodriguez makes his beauty industry debut with the launch of a men's concealer. Um, I thought this article was super interesting because you don't typically see on the market concealers or you know makeup specifically geared towards the men's category um so i really wanted to bring this up because i thought it'd be a great conversation to discuss men's grooming um he talks about how he has partnered with hims and her a company that uses telehealth to actually create custom skincare and wellness plans right for you and it is shipped to your door so he's partnered with them to create the Blur Stick, which they describe as a sleek, discreet concealer specifically designed for men that serves as a practical on-the-go solution for inconvenient blemishes. Personally, I love things that are great for on-the-go, so I understand why there are products like this out here. Um, I think it's also important to note that he is an investor of Hims and Hers, so it does make sense why, of course, they partnered with him. He is such a huge star and, you know, huge player. Um, so 
they talk about how he wanted to create a product that solved an issue which he faces every day jumping from meeting to meeting needing to something to conceal his blemishes or razor bumps i feel you and it's just specifically de- designed for men it's specifically designed for men and can be used for any of the skin imperfections um i just think it's so interesting clearly you see this image here of him using the product um the product comes in eight different shades and yeah i think it's cool that they teamed up together and they even said to develop a future hall of fame product perfectly designed to cover that awkward acne those rotten wrinkles and even those dark eye circles so clearly you see from this image here it is extremely sleek and compact um making it really i would say unisex or genderless um which i think is important to note because typically um in the beauty industry there is not really or in in terms of packaging in maybe the cosmetics industry from what i've seen there is a decent amount that it is the packaging is quite unisex but also in marketing term it, in the world of marketing i know that a lot of brands choose to maybe go for um other colors or other packaging that might not be seen as masculine but then again that's a whole another topic. <laughs> um so yeah, I thought it was just such an interesting topic that this is something that has come to light that you be are now seeing a shift in men's grooming um diving into makeup which I think is fantastic and also using such a strong hitting celebrity to tie in with this new product launch is also really incredibly smart. Um so as Hins and Hers described definitely just really easy to use to dab on your finger or on the target area blend and repeat for seamless coverage this comes in eight different shades as you can see um and yeah i don't know what what are your thoughts on this molly yeah, i think that there's a lot to talk about in terms of men's grooming and i'm happy to see that there is such products like concealers and other more makeup items for um the men's category and i think it's also interesting that there feels a need that there is a need um to be even targeting that category um typically because if you think about it a concealer you know from any other brand uh it can be used for men and women but usually it's not marketed that way yeah and i think that's a really interesting point to make just the difference in marketing and the difference in concealer in terms of gender like concealer to me is a product that can be used on any gender like skin is skin there isn't a fundamental or excuse me there isn't a large difference between the biology of male skin versus female skin like it it's very similar um i don't i'm not a scientist i'm not a dermatologist so like there's obviously going to be some differences but in terms of the way the product works i think it's very similar there's a brand called strix and they sell a very similar concealer so real quick there are quite a few men's concealers on the market i did a quick google search and also when i search concealer for men and looked at news articles look at how they're all a rods concealer they're all his like i don't know what that team is doing they're killing it they're releasing the story but he got is it wrong <laughs> honestly but he isn't the only one selling concealer for men he's also not like there're multiple people selling concealer for men the men's cosmetics grooming sector is growing rapidly but one of the other brands i found was called strix so they have a very similar just like a stick of concealer and they also have news articles so one of their news articles was men's makeup versus women's makeup what's the difference and i was like perfect okay there's a difference right um have you ever wondered is there a difference between women's makeup and men's makeup like strix Well, the short and direct answer is yes. There are significant differences between male and female skincare products. Care to know what it is and how it applies to your next skincare product purchase? Hold tight. In a bit we'll be exploring these differences. So with that, this article was posted September 8th, 2020. I did look up just in general women's makeup and I found this article 
I found can men wear concealer? Can men wear this? But they never had a follow-up article stating the differences. So we still haven't seen that. These are follow-up articles. This one was posted March, 2021. So pretty recently. And if you look at it, they still don't say the difference between why you can't just use a women's concealer or not a women's concealer, like a, like a concealer. It's a regular concealer that's sold yeah. at store, Sephora, whatever. Yeah, so they say on here, how do men use concealer? Men should ideally use it in a manner similar to women. So the way you apply it is the same. And then can guys use it? Yes, you can. You can buy it from a store. How to use it? Can you use it by itself? But then it doesn't explain why their men's concealer is different from the other concealers. So I don't think that, like you don't need a men's concealer, like anyone can use a concealer, but there are a lot of brands that are addressing the fact that men don't feel comfortable getting concealer. Like I, working at Ulta, I don't see a lot of men coming in saying like, hey, I'm insecure about my under eye circles. I want a concealer. Like I, I don't see a lot of that. So with that, having brands that make men more comfortable to use makeup, I guess that is a good thing because if you feel like you want to cover something up, you have the right to, you have the same rights that women do to like cover things up you don't want to show or emphasize things that you do want to show. It's nice that brands like Strix, like For Men, like War Paints, Menage, and code just to name a few exist and they market themselves as products for men but it's just marketing the product is the same and if you want to just use concealer you don't need a men's concealer yeah i i definitely agree i know that marketing does obviously shape and shift what we buy um so heavily i mean even just what you grew up using or what you've been marketed to as you know, a child or from your parents um, that affects what you use to this day. And so I understand why there are brands, you know, that do cater to men like con the concealer specifically. Um, but we know, you know, like as us, as, as two, as, as the two people that work in this industry and also are consumers in itself, we have the knowledge and understanding that these are the same concealers that, you know, are also, you know, sitting in the drugstore that are marketed mainly towards women. They can also be used towards men. And I often wonder maybe how that would change and shift if brands really did start including men in the beauty space more, um, especially in makeup, because I believe I believe makeup is fluid and just a form of self-expression. And if you want to use it to cover up, that's great. If you want to use it for drag, that's great, you know? And I think that it would be great and smart actually for brands to really keep that in mind when they do market and create these new products or they want to revamp their entire line and how they market these products that take into consideration also the men's category because it's truly booming. And I believe that not just in the concealer foundation category, but I think that it'd be important to include them in eyeshadow and mascara and all kinds of marketing from the top to the bottom that you see men represented. I think that also goes into another just um, I think that also dives into another topic of discussion where representation in marketing is so important and um, not just in gender, but also in age as well. Mm -hmm. I like that you brought up representation because this was actually something that my current industry topics class discussed where diversity is important and it's not just enough to like have men in your like show men but there is a diverse range of men and with that it's interesting because it makes sense why men or excuse me why brands are marketing it like this right now in the day and age we live in men don't feel comfortable using cosmetics and that's to me signals like an overall just like societal change that needs to happen before it can be ex not acceptable but profitable for companies to 
play the more unisex angle. It seems like even though the formulation is exactly the same, this marketing is how you connect to your demographic. And does your demographic really need to exclude men to feel included? And there's also a wide range of men. You have men that are using cosmetics for drag and they want to like like hide as many masculine presenting features as possible. That's going to be different from the man that just wants to like cover up his under eye circles and is really embarrassed that he's using concealer. So yeah. how do we still like show men and also appreciate both of these dynamics and do these dynamics fit with every brand? Like I don't think a man in drag would fit with every brand. I, I definitely agree. And I mean, that's the beauty of having so many different, you know, makeup brands out there and now brands like this, because I mean, as you see from um, Pims, uh, the way they're marketing it is more for really just on the go, you know, cover the dark circles, the little, you know, blemishes that you might have, which is fantastic. And like you said, Amelia, that compared to maybe someone that needs like that full coverage um, concealer is extremely it's a it's a different consumer um and it's important that we have that variety um and i think it's great that you know there are brands out there that do cater to each individual target market because there's always going to be um you know a consumer group that wants x y and z that very specific something and if we can have a brand that reaches them that's fantastic um i just hope that in the future as well um noting on representation that um, representation is shown throughout in their marketing and just in even in the company as well you know um, that's so important yeah and kind of looking at the marketing I was finding it really interesting the language they use for example with hymns they're focused on the sleek discreet tube secure top meaning it's not going to spill it's not going to be a mess and with Strix you have a very similar like quickly hide any imperfections that idea of speed and convenience and like kind of it's not obvious you're trying to be very discreet let them think you're perfect like it shouldn't be shared that you're using this concealer and we learn in academic settings, especially that the best way to start a new brand is by focusing on how you are different from the rest of the market and differentiating yourself. And a lot of people have found this opportunity of men's grooming. And I don't, like, this is just totally speculation, but how informed are all of these marketing decisions? Because, I feel like they're based on a lot of stereotypes. Just with my perspective, if you look at the branding of all of these, it's very black and white. You have Strix, for men is black and white. War Paint's black and white. Minaj is black and white. Cody, it's not black and white. They have a little bit of color, but the packaging's black. And um, they're all very similar feeling. And I, I just don't see how one of these brands is distinguishing itself from each other. Of course, they're distinguishing themselves from typical concealer being men's concealer. But within the men's concealer bucket, these there's not differentiation yet. Like we see in more traditional women's cosmetics where you have very unique brand identities. That is definitely true, because um, I was actually just thinking like, oh, well, like, you know, thinking about the other concealers that are on the market, I just think like, I mean, a lot of these that I'm noting that I see, it's like the quick, you know, easy on the go, like light, co light, light coverage, like super easy to blend in. Yeah. Um, but like in the world of makeup, as I know it, and like the concealers that I buy, like, you're looking at the difference in coverage, the difference in finish, um, the, each brand has its own marketing flair and personality. Whereas here, I mean, it appears to be, maybe I, I don't know enough, but like it appears to be kind of for the same uh, purpose and there's not much differentiation as you mentioned between all of these brands. So yeah, there is that question like, I don't want to say this, but like, is it necessary to have something that is a men's concealer? I don't know. I don't know. 
And I mean, it's up to the consumer that is buying that to decide that if that's something that they want to purchase or if they want to, you know, buy a concealer that isn't marketed towards men um, that they can also use. Yeah. And with this discussion, we have to acknowledge the fact that obviously we are not the consumers for these products. Like we're not men buying these concealers. We have a certain idea. But from my perspective, I think like having men's concealers is valid because there is currently a market that does not feel represented. There is currently a market that does not feel comfortable using concealers as they currently stand in the market because they're women's. However, I do think it's more important to have something beyond that you're just for men. Because like we're seeing with all these different brands, they're kind of all the same. They're all easy, convenient, goof proof sort of thing. Like for me, him stands out just because they have a celebrity behind them. So it's like has a face, but if you're going to be the men's concealer brand, it's not enough just to be the men's concealer brand. You have to have more to you, more to the branding. Like, for example, if you think of two polar opposite brands, Urban Decay and Too Faced, they're both cosmetic brands. Yes. yes. But they have very, very different aesthetics, ideas, branding. And we don't see that level of differentiation within the men's cosmetic space. And you need something beyond just I makeup for men because there's a lot of makeup for men options. Yeah, I think I think that's great too. And I mean, I know that there are a fair amount of brands that are really doing so well in terms of like genderless marketing and making sure that, you know, the makeup that is used and the products that are used are for both men and women of multiple you know ethnicities and age ranges which is fantastic um but i think ultimately it does come down to the consumer of if they are comfortable with buying you know a concealer that is marketed more towards men and seeing it as a blur stick or versus you know going to an Ulta, Sephora, or a drugstore and picking up a concealer there um, where majority of the times you do see it being marketed towards women. Do you think that the rise of influencers, like male influencers, makes a difference? Yeah. So when you have male influencers, I don't think of Redman Rock, Jeffree Star, James Charles, I don't think of them because while they are male influencers, they're not big to other men. Mm. So when I look up concealer for men, I don't see them. Um, I do see Robert Welch, but he doesn't like specifically say for men, but you have other influencers that are specifically like for men, which is interesting. And they're not as big. I found one that was completely reviewing the brand War Paint. Do you know a lot of influencers that are truly like for the traditional man and use cosmetics? No, I don't think so. Um, maybe that's also another point that we can touch that like the people that we do, the men that we do see that use makeup, it's, um, I don't know if that would be a sensitive topic. Like, they're more... They use makeup in a very different way. And I think what yeah. brands are marketing for. I think it's fair to mention the fact that, like, like we were saying, there are many reasons that men would want to use makeup. There are many kinds of men that would want to be using these products. Some of them want it to be very discreet, covering something they're insecure about. Others want it, like, don't care that you know. They want it to be very clear that they have perfect makeup on. And with that, they come with different influencers. So even though Manny MUA, James Charles, Jeffree Star, Brevin Rock, they're all male beauty influencers, they're not influencing men in the tradition traditional cis male presenting men so it'll be interesting to see which influencers start that are traditionally male influencers like a rod start to open up about using cosmetics yeah definitely i think that would be interesting 
and yeah i think that's pretty much all i have to say in terms of men's grooming at this moment who knows maybe we will revisit this topic as more news articles come out but please let us know what you think about this episode in the comments below we will definitely be interacting with you and of course feel free to follow our socials as well they're in the tab below and yeah thank you so much for tuning in bye Thank you.